Click Stuff is brought to you by Lucky Dice Cafe out of Huntsville, Alabama. Check them out at LuckyDiceCafe.com. Hey everybody, welcome to Sudden Death, the fun, whimsical, sometimes educational podcast of Clicked Off. I'm your host, Sam Powell, and joining me on this adventure are my good friends, teammates, and those who have more Hero Clicks knowledge than I do, Mr. TJ Wheeler. Hey everyone. And Azler Strife. Hey, how's it going? And joining us today, um, he's second in the nation. For the 2024 Hero Clicks, Mr. Alec Mooser. Hey, how's everyone so, doing? Welcome to the show, Alex. Or Alex, no. I want to call you Alec. I'm so, It's Alex. It's okay. Not my Alex. 21 year old cousin still calls me Alex, so we're all we're so good. So well, and we have an Alex on the on the Clicks Off team, so it's obviously very easy to mess up. I'm telling you, if you're listening to the show and you want to make this a drinking show. Um, just every time Sam calls Alec, Alex, you take a shot and then let's see how it goes. <laughs> I'll make a running count. There we go. I'll never make it through the show. <laughs> we cannot be legally held responsible for what happens. Drink responsibly, people. <laughs> okay. Um, real quick, I just want to let everybody know that Clickstaff is sponsored by Trollandtoe.com. Visit Trollandtoe.com, the world's largest hero clicks dealers for all your hero clicks and gaming needs. So if you're needing something specific for an upcoming tournament or world's coming up, make sure you visit trollandtoe.com to find some great prices. Use the coupon code CLICKSTOFF for 5% off your Heroclix order. Merchant and pre-order items do not apply. And if you like what you're hearing today on the Clickstoff Sudden Death, Sun Death podcast, check us out on patreon.com forward slash clickstoff. $1 and above gets entered into our monthly giveaways. $5 and above gets entered into our exclusive Discord server where you can participate in hero click strategy and tactic discussions. Woo! Again, that's a lot. I'm going to have to give you guys some of that to talk about. So, um, well, I mean, let's just jump in. We're back. We had Gen Con. Woo! Woo! <laughs> I know Alec and TJ were there. Let's... Come on. Sam and I were not. <laughs> It was a great weekend. Come on, TJ. I was very <laughs> exhausted come Sunday. We got meowed at. Well, uh, that did happen. Got meowed at. Yep. I I heard there was a I heard there was an all you can eat sausage bar uh, down the road. <laughs> <laughs> there was. That's pretty dumb. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> that was Dan's sausage bar. <laughs> oh. It went, I told Daniel, I said, what's funny is you guys ordered a charcuterie board. And I'm like, so you, you ordered sausages? And he's like, no, it was ham and turkey. I was like, oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, yeah, Gen Con um, did not go this year. Um, I had extreme FOMO, though. Um, it was bad. So I was like, I almost jumped in the car and came because I was like, gosh, I just want to be there. But, um, yeah, congrats to Alec. You got second in the nation. Yeah, congrats. Yeah, big congrats. Oh, thank you so much. It was a blast. I mean, I had very little expectations, but I somehow, uh, through the you know help of through other people with practicing and getting a lot of advice from other people um, and surrounding myself with as many people as uh, I could that were way better than me, I was able to somehow get second hey i mean i was super pumped i know like when daniel said he had to play you in top four i was like well either way i'm gonna be happy like i mean i think you've i know that you've been practicing with daniel and some of the guys and you've put in the practice and that that speaks volumes like we've always said you know 
to be on top of the game, you got to put the hours in. So. Yeah, no, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I, I, I totally agree with that. Uh, I just, I, I guess I just kind of came from a spot where I was just like, I'm just going to reach out to as many resources of, as I can have. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, I feel like if you have, I guess this is a, uh, I guess a, pl- a plug from me. Uh, if you like the click stuff channel, the Patreon thing, it's totally worth it. Um, whether it's with, uh, just, you know, Daniel or Daniel and as like just paying for the Patreon membership, just to have that monthly, Hey, let's talk about teams and maybe play a game is, was totally worth it. And so just to incentivize those out there who maybe want to up their game a little bit. There you go. Yeah. And, and something that you touched on of just like reaching out to as much re- as many resources as you could. Um, I think that's something that a, a lot of new players might be really hesitant to do uh, because they like come into this, you know, the competitive scene and they think like, oh, nobody, you know, everybody's going to be a jerk and nobody's going to want to share anything or talk about it. And nobody's going to want to help me. I, I think it, it's very important to stress that that is not the way the competitive scene for this game runs. It's very different than other games. Anybody who's new out there, reach out to everybody you can get all the sources of information that you can. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I totally agree with that. Um, I mean, I know when I first started like playing clicks, I I took in as much information as I could possibly find, reached out to as many people as I could to get more information. Um, clicks players love talking about clicks. It's surprising. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. I, I I sometimes have to catch myself a little bit because I'm like, hey, I know it's like in the middle of the workday. But I really had this like, great idea for a team. I want you to look over it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Either I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, so Alec, let's just go on to what was your team. And let's just, I mean, we don't have all the time in the world to go through over match and stuff. But maybe like your top two like moments in a game um, through the whole tournament. Yeah. No, absolutely. I, um, so I played Arachnite, and kind of my thought process behind that was, as long as Arachnite is modern legal, I will play Arachnite um, in in bigger tournaments. Um, I think Preach, Arachnite. Preach. I know it, he's my favorite. I mean, Spider Man's my favorite superhero. So having a a Moon Knight version of Spider Man is super cool. And I actually wasn't really hip to it until about a year or two ago. I'm like, this exists, and then. I pulled the chase at some point. I was like, okay, I got, I got to play this. I got to get as much mileage as is possible. So, um, I just think he's really nutty. Uh, Precision Strike, I think, is probably one of the most powerful. I think it's becoming like if there is a tier list, I think Precision Strike would be S tier personally. Um, I know, I don't know if that's a very radical opinion, but he just being able to make two attacks with Precision Strike is really good. And then if you put trick or, trick arrows on him, he's also very good. That stop click is also uh, very nice for dual uh, Kong attacks, just giving yourself 50-50 rollouts and then having a Scott Porter reroll on the side just in case. I always save my Scott Porter rerolls just for just for him. So, yeah, so Arachnite. Uh Kong was on there too, um, and uh, originally I was trying to go with the, like, the Avatar of Amit just to give that extra damage, but ultimately... Um, after thinking about it, and actually, da- actually, Daniel was the one that suggested, like, hey, and this that's because of another thing I'll come to eventually. Uh, I ended up running the av- avatar of Conchu on him just for an extra prob and stealth. Uh, MOE engine started with Doom Supreme, so I could have leadership, Blackheart, obviously, for deployment. Uh, Elsa Bloodstone was a last kind of last minute tech in that I th- thought was a great idea because she provides a lot of outwit and. A lot of offensive pressure for characters that are equipped, um, and also being able to be carried and make an attack afterwards is really nice. So there was also that, and then obviously the Scott Porters, and then uh, I ran Search for Amit's Tomb on the sideline. I put Cathan on Elsa Bloodstone, Bloodstone on every match except for uh, one of them, and then uh, Tarot Cards was kind of. Standard, but the Page of Pentacles, uh, and this will come into a, a match later. But Page of Pentacles really was the one that kind of saved my butt. Besides the Nine of Swords, 
it's just so good. I had one, two, three, four characters with stealth that could just jump around the map. Now one of them was Kong. So I mean, so yeah. So that's kind of uh, that was kind of the team. That's awesome. Yeah. I am. I'm super pumped that you did so well with Arachnite because, and I even told Daniel when he got home, I was like, I am just so happy to say that Arachnite got second in the nation because every time I want to play Arachnite. It was like, oh, he's trash. I'm like, mm-mm. nope, can't say that anymore. Can't say it anymore. <laughs> like, yeah, you, you I don't lost think to it. Legitimately, say that Arachnid has ever been trash. Mm. He's always been a good figure. He's... I could, I could go uh, back on some conversations, but I mean, it, I mean, <laughs> those are up the those receipts. Are, those are conversations that happen in the pal household, but. <laughs> <laughs> I will say my rack night will be here in just a couple days. There you go. TJ's like, <laughs> oh. jump on the rack night train. Choo choo. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think the rack night Elsa combo is really nice because just in case you, you can scout out a killmonger, you don't have to always keep a right. You can keep him unequipped in that sense. Absolutely. So. I've been on Elsa Prime for uh, very high on Elsa Prime for a while. I played her down at Rock Cup in the 400 Highlander. Um, she just does so much work for 30 points. As you were on Elsa Prime before she was even shown to the I world. I was super hyped <laughs> on Elsa Prime. Yeah. She's so good. He's like, I got a sick sense that I think there's going to be an Elsa Prime and she's going to be 30 points and she's going to be so good. <laughs> yep, yep. I'm, I'm definitely, I'm all in. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, great team. It was super... Great to see Arachnite do so well. Um, I felt like it was just a plethora of Kongs. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, you know, like the, the thong song, but instead of the thong song, it's just the yeah. Kong song. So, um, If anybody hasn't seen the, the breakdown, top eight, uh, five of the top eight teams had Kong. Ha- uh, four of those five were double Kong. <laughs> that's, yep, that's... Yeah. The other was Alex. <laughs> and then there was me. Um, Alec was the only team in top eight that was running Kong that wasn't running two of them. Wow, is that a statistic? I didn't even know yeah. that. <laughs> there goodness. were five Kong teams in top eight. Four of the five were double Kong. Oh my word. That, I'm looking at it now. That's nuts. Wow, yeah. Double Kong was definitely a matchup that I definitely practiced for. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, um, yeah, it's definitely a a good solid team. Like, yeah, I think when the map shrinkage happened, I think everybody just if if you weren't prepped for double Kong, you weren't paying attention. I agree with that. Yeah, and which I believe that was probably the happiest day in Daniel's life. Like he jumped in the car and we were going to Evansville, and he was like, "I have some good news," and I'm like, "What?" Like. I've been working all day. I'm tired. Like, what's going on? He's like, like this is break, like breaking news. It's the best news that's happened in like three months. And I'm like, like, did they come out with like a cool ultra change or something? He's like, they banned big maps. I was like, <laughs> like that's it. I mean, like he was giddy, like for the entire night, and I was like. That changes the whole complex of nationals. Like, I guess like I'm like everybody was so worried about Ivies, but I'm like, now you just gotta play Kong. Like, right? Is that the Which, that was, that was the thing? To me, is actually a problem with it, and I understand Dan was very happy, but I was able to look at it like objectively from a health of the meta, and I did not like that it was done. So I wasn't, I didn't like that it was done before rotation. I, I I agree with that statement. I think that if it would have been done a month or two prior to, I think it wouldn't have had as much like what uh, what's the controversy? That's the word. Yeah. But being hey, two weeks from now, just so you know, all those uh, big maps that you were trying to get, uh, no more. Yeah, I think it's I think I think the best thing that they could have probably done. I mean, they did what they did. Can't go back on it. But maybe they should have just said, I know, like the what was the map that everybody the big map. Uh, Morlock tunnels. Morlock tunnels. They should have just said, "No Morlock tunnels." Yeah. I mean, yeah. still have some big maps out there, but 
I think the Morlock Tunnels was the problem child of the big maps. So, but yeah, now, but now here we go. We have a small map that's Brock's bunker. <laughs> that's <laughs> just that as crazy statistics on it. Um, again, I, I, I kind of like this, this this stuff right now. Um, for anybody that wasn't following it. Uh, the statistics for the players who won initiative and went first win percentage was 65%. Unless his, their opponent had access to Major Brock's bunker, in which it dropped a whole 10%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and the percentages of players who won initiative and chose to go to Major Brock's bunker, choosing to go second, was a 95% win percentage. So I don't I don't want, I don't like to brag, but I, I was the one person that beat the person that on uh, Prox Bunker and in that statistic I felt really good about that. Hey, there's no hey Lucas was the one who lost. Lucas was the uh, no, I beat Caleb Reddick. Uh, I I uh so that was top eight. I he I won initiative. Is that what it is? Yeah. No, I want initi win initiative. It's the player wins initiative and elects to go second by picking Major Brock's bunker. Oh, okay. That's not my statistics then. I take that all back. Yeah, it was Lucas that lost choosing to go to the bunker. And I uh, I don't remember who it was against. I think that might have been Dan. Was that the critical miss game? No, he went to um, Bloodstone Maze for that one. I think oh. he said it was against Ed AB. But yeah, out of okay. 20 games... Yeah. One of them was lost, which is crazy. That is, it's a very that. So that was my first time. No one in my area or anything uses like has that map. Like we know we have no access to that map. And so me playing, like I played on Major Brock's bunker for the first time at uh, a, a Gen Con, and that is an it's a nutty map. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I do think. Yeah. Go ahead. Very good. I was gonna say I do think it's it's gonna be necessary um, to stymie the going second, um, as shown by the statistics. But I do think as more of them become available, it's it's better as more winner map kits are are put out, and also as more people get more time to play on it. It is a map that you need to know how it works. Yes, I agree. The and transitions are nutty. Right, all those crazy walls in your starting zone. Yep. Hmm. Okay, well, um, yeah, if you're listening, get Brock's Bunker. <laughs> like, do a win a map. Win it. Yeah. Um, so, Alec, uh, so we told us, you got, told us your team. So, like, let's go through, like, two of your best moments in the whole tournament. Like, tell me your best game moments. Okay, so I played a lot of great players um, that I probably had no right beating, but happened. And but I, I had a I had a lot of great matches, and I don't want to accidentally miss anybody. But I mean, I don't. I'm not gonna go through every map, but just know that every map, every match that I had, I learned something from. Like I took away, okay, so I shouldn't do that this time, or I forgot to do this, or this this person did this, so that's something I need to look out for. Um, I played Isaac three times that weekend. <laughs> Um, I played him in pools, and I, I I barely beat him. And actually, that was probably one of the best matches that we both like played. That's something that we both took away. We were just like, this was just a really good match. There was nothing wrong about it. It was just really close, and we both like hit and missed some critical um, hits. But ultimately. Uh, what the the thing that pulled uh, me out was Almut's tomb was the the eight points uh, get uh, scored ten points. I think the difference between me and him were like twenty points, but on that match, so it was a very close game. Uh, anything particularly in that match that I can think of? Not really. I took down Mern pretty quickly because I know the Mern matchup for me is really terrible because Mern just ruins a lot of. A lot of characters, and with a Rack Knight having a base 11 attack, it just... It, uh, uh, Mern or, or Jennifer Kales, anything that negates uh, stat buffs is just really hard with an 11 attack, especially if you're attacking on a uh, a very high defense. So 
Um, so that match was uh, really good. Um, I also want to talk about the Caleb Reddick map because he did take me to Major Brock's bunker, and he kind of did the whole little defensive shuffle in, um, in the corner of the map on the bottom, like where that weird wall is um, on the first floor. Um, but I I can't remember exactly what happened. I wish the game was recorded, but I w- um, turn two was my turn to go, or whatever, uh, first turn of turn two, I flipped over the Page of Pentacles. And I was able to, like, jump every, like, literally jump everybody up and keep on jumping back. Like, I jumped up uh, Elsa and made attacks, and then I jumped up Arachnid and made attacks, I jumped up a Blackheart to bring up some other characters, and then jumped him back. Um... Swapped into Doom Supreme, so I could, if he started probbing and perplexing, I could start either stealing those or healing characters or taking action tokens off. Kong started booping around, too. Um, it was really... I mean, he has a really... I think he has the exact same team, uh, I mean, as uh, Daniel had. So he had Elsa <laughs> and stuff like that. So um, one of the big things was just... One of my big things is I target Blackshirt Porter and Blackheart and stuff like as soon as I can. Because they just uh, they have, not being able to have rerolls is just super crazy in my opinion. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, overall, I mean, I, I really that was a really good match too. It came, I think, uh, it came down to like our. I had, I think, I had Kong, Doom Supreme. I had Kong. He only had Kong and Black or and uh, like Black Shirt Porter up, and then or something like that. But it was just really fun because it was like I had to. Th- it was just like. I was just jumping around with Page of Pentacles, and that was kind of the deciding factor. So that was a really good match. And then obviously playing against Dan. Um, I mean, I, I he's such a good player. And the night I didn't sleep well, our Airbnb was in a really rough part of Indianapolis. We heard <laughs> gunshots that night, three doors down, and we ran inside our doors. We were all sitting on the porch. And so we like, and then our fire alarm started going off randomly in our Airbnb. So we didn't have enough sleep. Oh, so no. I ended up waking up at like five o'clock in the morning. I couldn't fall back asleep because I was really like excited to play in top four. And I just I like sat down and pulled up Let's Creek Manhattan, and I was just like, okay, so what's my defensive strategy here? Because it's very possible I lose map. And then I pulled out uh, our buddy Emilio printed out a very small picture of major brock's bunter bunker and we use dice to indicate our characters and i was just like okay so just like going through in my head and stuff like that and and the defense and then i ended up losing map to blitzkrieg manhattan so that's right that's what i picked sorry and then i ended up having a really defensive option where basically i had to have dan choose do you want to go after arachnite or do you want to go after kong but if you split it up, you're not going to get both of them unless you have a follow-up attack. But, um, I, I mean, Daniel was such a good sport um, playing against him. Alec, you and, don't have to brag uh, on him. He's not on the show. <laughs> no, I, 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 I just, I like to give credit where credit's due. Dan had a lot of help with building everything. <laughs> I mean, I try to do it with everybody because everybody I played was incredibly good. So, but, uh, in the end, I ended up pulling it out, and um, that was just a, that was a really good match. That was a oh my word! I'm in top two. I don't I did not expect to get a pool, so I have no idea what's going on. But uh, those are those are kind of the big matches in general. Nice. Um, I know, like I said, I played a lot of great players as well, like Kenny Minx, uh, um, Ed Arnold, uh, Ed Arnold Berkovitz. I played him too. Um, yeah, there are some really good people. And but those are those three matches in particular were the ones that I was very fond of. Yeah. Well, congrats, man. We we're super happy for you. And um, like I said, you put the time and practice in. That's. I mean, like you said, clear as day. Like uh, you learned something from every game, and I think that's that speaks volumes of where the game is and how just complex everything is. Because, I mean. Even Daniel makes mistakes, and he he's like, man, I forgot that. Like, wish I would have remembered to roll that die, you know. But this is part of it. So, well, thank you so yeah. much. Uh, yeah, thanks. I I was really excited. Um, but yeah, overall, it was a it was a great experience. I love Gen Con. Good. Uh, 
TJ, so. TJ, what what happened, dude? Do do we need to talk like after this? Like, um, is this your fault? What was it? My fault? You, what? You're my theory. You, if you don't show up, then I just can't oh, play anymore. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. I redeemed myself in Clicks Bowl. I heard you guys did really well in that, so um, we won't so. make TJ go into what happened with him, but. Really proud of you well, trying, TJ. Well, I did get my uh, run ended by Isaac, so. Oh, there, there you was go. That. You could, you could yeah. say you it like You lost I... the Isaac? You don't ever We're... lose the Isaac. I <laughs> lost the Isaac. It finally happened. It finally happened. If it helps, E3 owed me. E300 owed me in top 16. Uh, he demolished me. Yeah, he also 300 nothing me. Well, you better have that out of your system come Worlds. So you I found know out we're going to have to play four points again. We do every so game. What we learned is that Isaac is the B slot, and if Dan is the B slot, he will play Isaac. Oh, because damn. that happened during Clicks Bowl. I played Ed, and Dan played Isaac. Yeah, Isaac was B slot the last two years. Mm -hmm. well, so with I my shift to A... I didn't know that was a thing. I, that was my first time ever playing in a team sealed event like that, so I didn't know that A slot, B slot, and C slot really meant something. It doesn't. It doesn't. Oh, it's, it's, it's just, just in our head. It's psychological yeah, it's just, warfare, okay? Well, a lot of people think like, oh, you put like your best team in this slot, and then if everybody's thinking that, then nobody's doing it. Um, the only <laughs> thing that actually is is a continual thing is you give the person in, uh, your A slot is your person with your best handwriting. Uh, yeah, so oh. the, yeah that, that's what happened this time. All right, because, so I made the right call. I have the worst handwriting. Because it's all on the phone now, yeah. and you have to get your numbers oh. right, so they make the accountant the A slot. Yeah. It's a, it's just psychological warfare, because it's like, wait a minute, like if he's the B slot, I don't want to be in the B slot. I want to put Daniel in the B slot. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Because no matter how much you think about it, you're always going to be like, well, we play this random team. And then you're like, well, my team is bad against, like, say I'm playing just a no name. Like I have pulled junk and now I'm playing against like my counter to what my build does. <laughs> and it always works that way when I play team sealed. So, so, uh, <clears throat> so you guys have, so some of you guys played, um, did all did uh, TJ? Did you play at uh, Origins? Unfortunately, I I, I <laughs> no. I was at Origins. I had a team on a map. Uh, I wouldn't call anything I did playing the game of Hero Clicks. No, you only lost to me by five points. Oh, <laughs> TJ, I'm sending you a big hug right now through the screen. <laughs> I was just so wondering I, what interface was better, Best Coast Pairings or Sandbox? Um, I, have I like the Sandbox better myself. Okay. But I, I can see the argument the other way. But no, just, I just, yeah. the ease of use and I don't have to constantly log out and log back in. So I like Sandbox better. <laughs> <laughs> yep, there you go. <laughs> okay. I was just wondering. I, I just said I know there's some weirdness with sandbox. I was wondering if best coast pairings was better uh, also, or not. I also noticed like as the weekend went on, like the sandbox interface kind of changed a little bit to let me refresh the page and quickly shift between different columns. So it's like I think they were adapting it as we went. Uh okay. That makes sense. So um, we talked about Clicks Bowl. So Clicks Bowl went well for TJ and Daniel and um, Caleb. You guys went 3-0. No. Um, Alec, how did you guys do? So we had two teams because there were six of us all. Oh, there's, yeah, there were six of us all together staring at Airbnb, and we split up into two teams. And I, our, my team went 2-1. Uh, and one. I got to play Mr. Mind, the big boy, and that was a lot of fun. Um, he's so good. He is. He's. I had. One? What? Did you get a little one? I did. Yep. I played uh, an animal team. I played Mr. Mind, Poseidon, uh, who's also so good. Um, 
I played Wally West, the Flash, the whatever the prehistoric one. Caveman Wally West. Oh, yes. So good. And then I played. Let's see. I think, and I played like Detective Chimp then too, as well. You're, just for you didn't play Mr. Mind at full points. No, I played him at a hundred, which mm-hmm. I didn't know if that was the call or not. But I was like, why not? I think, I, well, I'm not going to give you my sealed strategy. No. Go for it. <laughs> okay. <world> coming up. <laughs> Fair now, enough. I think, I think if you get if you get big and little Mr. Mind, I think you just play big like full point Mr. Mind. Okay. I can see that. I'm, I'm looking at him right now. Oh yeah. Yep, yep, yep. I yeah, I can totally see here. that. His little shape change thing is really fun. Mm-hmm. Um I know I also... Isaac was also playing big Mr. Mind with the little Mr. Mind, but I didn't know what else was going on over there. Like, I know uh, Alex Mater had it. He had Mr. Mind, Little Mr. Mind plus Constantine. And he said Mr. Mind didn't take a single point of damage in three rounds. Wow. And Constantine was, like, on last click once. Yeah, that's that's who we played in round three was Lucas and Kevin and, Kevin and Alex. Alex. I, uh, I had Mr. Mind on his click three to start out with, the Perplex. Because I had some prob, so sure. I went for a mind control with Mr. with little Mister Mind. Because I had to call Anthony over like twenty times. I'm like, I just double checking. Right? <laughs> I feel like I'm cheating. I'm allowed to do this, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the only difference is is that you don't get the size bonus. You you still are tiny size, Mister Mind. You're just right. drawing lines of fire from the colossal figure. Um, in terms of like the square. The yes. Um, so I was on his, I was on Mr. Mind's click three, which he dies on four on a perplex, and I went for a mind control and I crit missed, and it died. <laughs> that's the game that, that's the the round that we lost. Oh, just, oh dang! And I was just like, so what happens here? <laughs> and Anthony was like, yeah, dude, that thing's dead. <laughs> I'm like, all right. <laughs> so if you're out there and you are playing Little Mr. Mind and Big, Big Mr. Mind, I would always say. Put them on click one or two, just in case that happens. Yeah, put them on prob. Oh, <laughs> or outlet's good, outlet's good in, in sealed right now. I agree. Wow. Outlet deck tonight. Play shadow if you pull shadow. Oh, shadow. Yes. So Did you play against Emilio? Uh, I played shadow. Oh, you played shadow. Okay, yeah. yeah. And I had three enhancements. It was amazing, and I had uh, trick arrows. Yeah, it was so fun. <laughs> oh my gosh, bro! Did you uh, did you play him at full or thirty, or her? I guess it's a lady. Uh, I played her at full. Heck yeah! yeah. Still, that sounds that sounds yeah. correct. So the the game I lost, Jalen had pulled a blue beetle prime, and a regular blue beetle, and Yeet. for some reason also had the Chase King Jefferson. Oh, so. Oh, that- that figure looks so fun too. Yeah. Did he, wow. did he actually remove anybody from the game? No, because he likes to roll twos and threes. <laughs> oh, oh Jalen. Oh, man. He was so excited oh. about it, and then he never happened. <laughs> I mean, so consensus of what I've heard over the last week of just hearing the stories from the guys and hearing you guys talk is that Masters of Time. I think it's such a good set right now for us. Oh, yeah. Um, I a think plus set. I think it's going to be one of the top tier sets that we haven't had in, in some time. Like, And being in a DC set is kind of shocking. Like, So it's really funny. Um, I was talking to uh, a couple of people the Thursday of Gen Con. And we were talking about, like, man, we, you know, we hope. We were hoping that Master of Time wasn't going to be legal for Worlds. We were talking about it. It's like, well, good thing that if it's not legal for Worlds, this set doesn't have anything that's really impressed us. Like, nothing really seemed to, like, shake up the meta. And then Thursday at Gen Con happened, and all the spoilers started rolling in from BRs. We were like, welp, I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just eat those words. <laughs> yeah. Wow, this set is insane. <laughs> it, yeah. I agree. It's great. I agree. And I think post yeah. rotation, I think after some announcements are made, I think I think there's gonna be a lot seen played in this set. Like all around. 
and I think the set's like one of those rare ones where it's really fun and sealed, mm -hmm. but it also like going to change the game. I agree yeah. with that. Just just from looking at it, because obviously I haven't played it yet, but just from like looking at it and analyzing the figures, it looks like a really good sealed experience. Specifically, uh, brick sealed. Yes. yes. Because you don't want to be the person who gets stuck with Daxamite, because that's the easiest 120 points you'll ever score in a BR. <laughs> I can't yes. tell you how many times... <laughs> This character times. sucks. I just, just like, all right, outwit and vulnerability. I'll come up with you. I'll come up and attack you like three times, and then that's 120 points. This character sucks. Oh, it's the worst. I felt yeah. so bad. It's definitely this Masters of Time set's really uh, giving me like World's Finest set kind of vibes. Um, yes. you know, of course, it has the Colossal Boosters, but like. World's Finest to me is still one of the top tier sets of all time. Like it was so fun I to play agree. sealed. It was you saw it in the meta play. It was just an amazing set to play. And I feel like Masters of Time is gonna be right up there with it. So Was also the actual World's Finest figure played so that so that predates my competitive knowledge, so mm -hmm. I have no idea. I just know that set from when me and my buddies would play and how fun it was. Because that one had the uh Kingdom Come chases, right? Like Green yes. Lantern sitting on the throne? Yeah. Okay. I'm just trying to think of like what figures were actually good in Spectre. competitive at that time. Spectre. Remember oh, yes. Spectre. TJ, space, TJ, remember Spectre Cycle? Spectre Cycle was the bomb. Spectre Cycle was amazing. <laughs> um, oh. I mean... A lot of the, like, Greenland, a lot of the chases saw play just at their low dials, too. Yeah, and of course the ID cards were there, so you had, like, the ID cards were calling out with some of those KC chases. But yeah, I thought it was just... Kazam. Yeah, shh. <laughs> Broken. Ooh, those were the good old days. Um, but, like, it's just, it was even fun playing in Sealed, and, I mean, they had the God Packs, too. Like, you could pull a whole God Pack with KC chases, but it was still fun mm. to play in BRs. It was still fun to play in Sealed. Um, I mean, you had, oh, I mean, so many good pieces in that set. Gosh. That was a great set. I remember that set. That, that set and Trinity War have a very close place in my heart in terms of this hero clicks and how much fun, because that was, we were just playing at the kitchen table at that point. We had no idea competitive hero clicks was a thing. <laughs> and now look where you are. And now look where I am. Second in a nation. <laughs> Watch out. I would have never, never thought that. I just picked up the game last week. What are you talking about? This isn't hard. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, definitely not words I would ever mutter. This game is so, so interesting. So, TJ and Alec, so what did you get to do anything else at Gen Con? Like, or was it just straight clicks for you guys? Go ahead, TJ. I mean, I walked through the vendor hall for a little bit, and uh, actually, me and PJ did uh, True Dungeon Saturday afternoon. So in between Nationals and Clicks Bowl, we did like an hour or two hours of True Dungeon, which was awesome. Cool. Yeah, he uh, he brought me like a basically a maxed out character to play because I hadn't played in years. And so we just steamrolled through all the fights. Nice. Yeah. Alec, did and you then, get to uh, do anything else? I, or um, Unfortunately, not this year. So I went last year on Sunday, and me and my wife walked around. Because me, me, me and my wife love board games. Like, we just, like, that's our thing. She just doesn't like Hero Clicks because there's so many characters to remember. Um, But we, we did a lot of stuff last year, but this year, like, I just felt like I came I came in on Friday morning so I felt like like I didn't have time to go like peruse the vendor hall I was like oh I gotta be back here for the Kevin event I gotta be back here for my BR I gotta be back here for my pod my, my pools or something mm -hmm. like that so unfortunately I didn't get to go see anything but I heard a lot about True Dungeon and that really interests me it sounds really fun cool um, also yeah. I saw the return of Heroescape Oh, yeah. And that was a game that I played uh, 20 years ago that is maybe it predates Heroclix a little bit, I guess, doesn't it? Or 
was mm-hmm. around the same time. And yeah. that game was so much fun. It's I don't know how to explain it. It's hex tiles and did you know, just have like kinda, a little did you have your like your little nerd moment when I, you saw it? I had a like, super nostalgia moment when I saw it and I was taking pictures and sending it to my friends from college. We used to play it all the time. Nice. <laughs> hey, that's all what Gen Con's about. Like just I, I've watched some videos and TikToks and it looked super crowded. But it I don't was, know. It, it was sold out, right? Yeah, it was sold out yeah. for the first time ever. And that's that means it's huge. Like this, the number okay. we heard was 70,000. Oof. Wow. A lot of people. That's a lot of that's a lot of sweat. It was Hero That's what got everybody in. <laughs> Hero yeah. got him in. They were like, did it. screw Lorcana, <laughs> it's Hero Escape. <laughs> 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 so, um, we have some upcoming events coming on. Um, we need to kind of get on to those. So, um, I know they recently announced some of the Florida Champion Clicks events. And I believe there's one in Ohio at Jay's place at Heroes and Games in Columbus. That is on on August 24th. And registration is now open for that if you're listening. Uh, I know. I, as, of, as of earlier today, there were five spots left. Five Ooh. spots left. It's going to be a bloodbath. Um, I know Az is going. Yep. He's playing Pegasus Cap. Probably not. <laughs> oh, you're going to play Merlin. Mer- Merlin. Yeah, you're playing yeah, Merlin. There we go. Butterfly into Merlin. Butterfly into Merlin. I'll be playing Merlin into traffic. <laughs> so mean. <laughs> oh, secretly we're just gonna get a bunch of Merlins and send them to you as it's gonna be great. Um, so, but I know that there's some other events like Texas is doing one soon. Is that is that right? As yeah, so the the events. As far as we know, are going to be Ohio, Florida, Texas, New Jersey, California, and Omaha. Nice. Um, I do not have the... Oh, I do have the dates. Uh, Highlander Games in New Jersey on the 25th. Heroes and Games on the 24th. House Rules Gaming in Florida, which is the sponsor of the Champion Clicks, uh, September 7th. Uh, Krypton Games in Nebraska uh, and Omaha. August 24th, same day, Atomic Comics in California uh, on the 7th, and uh, no information on the Texas date as of yet. Yeah, and they announced Florida dates in March, so... Yeah, I'm super excited about that. I was... Uh, that's I mean, birthday weekend. Someone's birthday weekend, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Whose birthday weekend? Mine. What, uh, what... Sorry, it's just too much information, but when's your birthday uh, weekend? Uh, March 10th, uh, so it'll be while we're at Champion Clicks. That's my weekend, too. Let's go. Whoa. Heck yeah. Well, maybe. I'm not actually I'm not too sure, but mine's the 15th, so. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> There's actually, a moment I thought the, Alec like, in, forgot his birthday. I was like, did he just forget I his also birthday? I thought that for a second. <laughs> Um, the Austin, Texas uh, Champion Clicks event uh, does have a date August 31st at Dragon's Lair. Okay. So... I believe all of these are going to be 300 modern tournaments for prep leading up into Worlds. Uh, P- the, uh, PJ, the judge, uh, the head judge of Champion Clicks, did sp- uh, specify they are going to follow the WizKids watch list ban list that we found mm-hmm. out about. Um, mm-hmm. And this will be all in preps for Worlds um, leading into September. Yeah, and I, b- I believe this is the only and earliest time you can get the deceased dark side, correct? Correct. Uh, it is for the mm-hmm. top two winners, uh, the top two placements for the uh, Champion Clicks events. Uh, the prizing is uh, fellowship. Is everyone will get a King Arthur and an old King Thor? Um, I'm sorry. Participation is a brood. Fellowship is a King Arthur and an old King Thor. Top eight is a King Thor. Top four is a Cyclops. Top two is a deceased Dark Side. The winner gets a brick of Masters of Time um, and a uh, first round bye to the main event at Champion Clicks. Heck yeah. That's a big deal. It's a big deal. Um, uh, yeah, anybody who hasn't gotten to Champion Clicks or, or been in any of their events, 100% recommend it. I know yeah. that's a bit down the line, but you know, start planning, get down to Florida, get to Champion Clicks. 
honestly, like now that I've been to Rock Cup, I know I've heard a lot about it. I think Champion Clicks is, in my opinion, is is my favorite event of the year. Yeah, it's definitely up there with me. I'm working on the calendar right now. Because it's in March and not January. There's some feasibility yeah. here. Uh, right around spring break now. Yeah. Yeah, it is unfortunately not during Theo's spring break. So, unsure what I'm doing. I know Daniel's going to try to get there. You're bringing them back. You're bringing them down again. I, it's got to take my kindergarten. Do I take my kid out of kindergarten? Yeah, you just you can do like it's a learning experience where he yeah. can your educational time that. at Disney World. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna learn about <laughs> uh, teach you about the ways of the Force. We're talking. We're gonna go to Epcot and learn about countries. So I, mean, I went to Epcot last year. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. So um, along with Champion Clicks, right around the corner right now is we got Worlds coming up. Obviously, Woo-hoo. you guys are prepping for it. I'm not sure what teams you're going to play because now they've made some announcements. Next week. Huh? That could change next week. Yes, it's going <laughs> to change. It's going to big, change big next week. So we have Worlds coming up in September. So let's lead into WizKids came out, made an announcement. A watch list is coming. So. No, that's not. It's, it's actually different than that. Um, so what's what's really exciting is uh, it's not a watch list. It is a ban errata list. Okay. Ban Ooh. errata list. Scratch that. Ban errata list. WizKids has announced it's coming. It should be here before next Friday is what yes, I was told. Friday the 16th. So, um, yeah. At least they're not doing like the 23rd. <laughs> and then it's like, hey, right. I heard you're going to play oh. Double Kong. Well, it's probably not going to be able to do. So, we can spend two hours on this podcast speculating what we think is going to come out of that. Obviously, I know in our chat, like that day, I had to like completely like silent it because it was like word vomit in the, you know, click off chat. I think as couldn't type fast enough. Um, like, at, yeah, it was just, it was a bloodbath. Like you guys were going crazy. Um, and I just came home and I was like, what was the chat about today? And Daniel's like, oh, there's there's a, there's a list coming out. Like, it's going to change the whole meta. So, yeah. I mean, as tell me one thing you th- you think you hope's on the list. Just one. That I that I hope is on the list? Yes. Blackheart. Okay. Alec, what is your choice? What's your I'm guess? Tomb. Okay. TJ. I'm going to go with Ivy. Ooh, okay. Because then if Ivy's gone, I don't have to play Kong. Okay. Uh, yeah, you still do. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It's still the best figure. Uh, I think... I, I really think... How about you? Huh? How about you? What do you, what do you think's uh, going to be on it? I, I think Kong's going to be on it. I think that's a safe assumption. Um, mm-hmm. I, and I... I don't... I don't want to go into what I think is going to happen because, you know, like we could spend hours talking about this, but um, we'll see. I mean, it's in WizKids' hands now. So, yep. I mean, obviously, oh, okay. I think I think they are more proactive now to get out there and like make the game evolve and not just be stagnant for two years. Because yeah, so- in the past, they would have just been like, well, Worlds is in four weeks or six weeks or whatever. We're not changing anything. And guess what? You're going to have 50 teams with Kong on it. Like, or double Kong. Like, it's just not going to be good for the game. I think they're really trying to be proactive and changing the game, seeing what's not healthy for the game, and evolving it. So. Yeah, so I had... um. I have been very vocal that I did not think Masters of Time should be legal for Worlds. But I had a caveat to that, that if it was not going to be legal for Worlds, we absolutely needed a watch list um, between Nationals and Worlds. The the problems were apparent and obvious, um, and I think a lot of the fixes are pretty simple. So the fact that WizKids put out an announcement that said Masters of Time is not going to be legal for Worlds, everybody was like, okay, 
I, and me specifically, I was like, okay, good start, good start. And then literally like four hours later, they were like, there is a ban and a rata list. We're not even going through the normal watch list procedures of releasing a article of the figures that we're going to be watching. And then later on down the road, releasing what we're going to do. They're just like, we, we know what needs done. We're just going to do it. Mm-hmm. Yep. 100% brilliant. A plus the whiz kids over the last couple of months um, looking out and caring for the health of the game. Hey, it only yeah. took four years, TJ, but Chuck is now listening. <laughs> oh, Chuck. Chuck Chuck is now listening. So we, we've got through to Chuck. So <laughs> Alec is like, um, I have no idea who Chuck is. I don't even know what you guys are talking about. Oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Chuck. Chuck was our Whiz Kids representative that we used to joke around on about the uh, on the old show about like you know when something stupid came out, we're like, "Damn it, Chuck! Like you didn't uh, listen okay. to us, you know." Felix Faust. <laughs> Damn it, Chuck! <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, I, I mean, I'm happy. I I'm, think it's it's I think it's great. Now, I really thought Masters of Time would have been legal for Worlds. I just I thought them releasing it at Gen Con. I mean, I get it that it's like, well, it's only going to come out a week before, or two weeks before Worlds. But like, I remember the year Theo was born, Blackheart and Illuminati came out, or Black uh, Black, Black Panther. Panther and the Illuminati came out on June fifth. And the next week was Nationals, and it was legal. Like, I remember Daniel specifically saying, like, I've got to have some pieces from this set. And I was like, well, hope you pull well, buddy. <laughs> like, sure. and I mean, I, we bought a ton of it. Like, we bought, like, three cases of it just in hopes that Daniel pulled what he needed to play in Nationals. So. But I think we can, like, I, I – I know a lot of people are using like past precedent for what WizKids has done before. Um, I think some of those decisions were mistakes. Um, and I, I think them choosing not to repeat those mistakes, um, specifically for the, the reasoning that they had given of why it will not be legal, is looking out for the international players that will not have access to it. It might not even be released by then for international players. Okay, that's yeah, fair. Yeah, I, I agree with that. A that's lot. fair. That that makes sense now. Okay, I, that's that's fair. I'll give it that. Because I know I know for sure. I'm pretty sure like Toxic Clicks will be coming. They always come to Worlds and like Edison. Yeah, definitely be there. Yeah. So I just like yeah. Imagine like they would just have such a disadvantage. I mean I don't know if they would have a disadvantage. Well, they have a disadvantage in terms of like the set not just probably having limited resources and stuff like I, I that. I think but... they're struggling to even get Deadpool still at this point. So actually, every time I see Wizkiz post, somebody from I think is it Italy brings up the fact that they still don't have Next Phase in Europe. Yeah. Now well, it's been out long enough that like we should be able to to help them out. Doing that with a set that it was literally released two weeks before the event, a little harder to do. Mm -hmm. That's fair. I didn't really think about international. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I mean, it'll be hard enough for the, the, the US players to get this stuff. It'll be even harder there. So that's okay. that was like my big push for Masters of Time not being legal. But if there was not going to be any changes to the current environment via a watch list or, or a Radis and Bands, I think it needed to be legal due to a to give a meta shakeup. Yeah. Because I do think there are enough figures in Masters of Time that could play counter counterbalance to some of the elements in the current meta game. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Okay, well, that's why we gotta have different minds in this game because you know gotta have Az coming in with some logic and like, <laughs> slow down, Sam. Gotta think about the international people. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I will always try to think about the the community at large. Az has got a big old heart. I'm just like, screw the people. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you don't want to get rolled by a Black Lantern team out of. He's like, oh, I didn't prepare for this. It's just that's <laughs> there's only like one Swamp Thing in existence right now. As, I was like 100 percent probably playing Swamp Thing if Masters of Time was. Leaving. I tried to trade for Swamp Thing. 
Oh, I would have found a way to make it work. I was probably playing it. <laughs> I saw I saw like twenty green men and then like one swamp thing. I was like, I saw more of the super chase, ultra chase than ultra swamp chase. thing. Yeah. So the green man. I don't know if anybody mentioned this in any of our chats yet or not, but we opened our prize brick or boosters they gave us for clicks bowl. Uh -huh. Me and Kayla both opened a green man at the same time. Wow. Oh, that's wild. Yes. yes, from just random boosters that they were handing out. Yeah, because when Daniel told me, like, what you guys all pulled, I was like, did you guys get, like, a chase booster? And he's like, no, we just got three random boosters, and we pulled chases, <laughs> like, two chases. And yes. I was like, that is sick. Yeah. Like Green Man is really good. That's a figure I'm looking at building with uh, when it's legal as well. And then I proceeded to lose the roll-off and lose the Green Man. Who did you lose oh. it to? Caleb and oh. Daniel. But I got King Jefferson, so... Another chase I was looking yeah, at. Yeah, they pulled out. three chases, <laughs> so it was like they were all walking away with something. Yeah, we were yeah. very happy. <laughs> King Jefferson is really good, in my opinion. I think yes. a lot of people were sleeping on that figure. I love it. I think it's cool looking. I mean, like, in terms of, like, what it does. Yeah, shutting off super strength outside of seven of your starting area just makes going second not absolutely miserable. Yeah. Yep. Okay. It, yeah, I agree. So, um, Alec, you're a guest on the show. Um, I'll let Az or TJ introduce Gator Tot to you because you absolutely have no idea who Gator Tot is. So, whoever wants to take over. All right. As uh, as Gator Tot's personal management and representative, um, Gator Tot is the uh, MMA trained uh, fighting alligator. Uh, son of Mr. Chomps, the mascot of the main Clickstoff show, who was retired due to Scott Porter uh, putting, you know, finally putting him down uh, as far as a defeat in his win loss record. And Gator Todd is out for revenge, uh, so he's taking on every member of the Clicks of the uh, Clicks community that he can. So, Alec, the question to you is: Would you rather fight Gator Todd, a MMA trained alligator who is also trained as a, a lucha libre? Or never play a rack night again. Is he? Would you? Would you say that he has studied extensively in the art of Croc Magov? Oh. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> Sorry, he, he just... wasn't until this very moment. Yes. <laughs> he learned it quickly. He just he was learned. Quick study. He just added that to his resume. I gotta write that down. Is he okay? Um. How, how many questions am I allowed to ask about Gator Tot before I make my decision? I will cut you off. Okay. So, like, how, how like, is he, like, is he in, like, normal baby alligator size? Uh, He's not a baby gator. No, oh. he's, he's not a baby gator. He's he's just the son of Mr. Chomps, he, the nasty-ass wrestling yeah, alligator. Yeah, he's a teenager. He's, he's bulky. Is he, like, a prodigal son, or is he, like, that son you're just like, oh... He, I mean, he makes his father proud. Okay. Is he bipedal? Like, am I like, can I just like sidestep him the whole time? And no, no, he's he is both uh, proficient uh, on all fours and uh, as a quadruped and as a biped. Hmm. Or never play a rack night again. Never play a rack night again. Mister Chomps heard, or, or sorry, Gator Tot heard that you said you will play a rack night for as long as you can, and was coming for it. <laughs> um would it be a fight to the death yes oh dear <laughs> see you later rack knight <laughs> <laughs> no! All right. into the display case he goes forever <laughs> gator tot right. took his first right. victim or... yep i will inform gator tot of your decision i well <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate him asking that question. I, I like it's okay, Betty. You don't have to, you know, have nightmares tonight or anything. Okay. You are uh, safe. Okay. Oof. I was. I mean, oof. Oof. The close one. <laughs> I, do, I, do, I will miss Arachnid dearly, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, and and by the way, I don't know if you guys saw. I don't know if TJ and Azzy saw. Uh, so people posted pictures of their Gator Tot sticker on their boxes on our page. So, I did. um, woohoo! He's Mr. out there. He was using his Gator Tot uh, bystander or action token for his shark for camo. 
Yes. Ooh. So. How does one get the sticker? Well, I'm officially out now after last weekend. <laughs> I think I'm out of stickers, but I think I still have action tokens. I am going to place an order, and I okay. will do my best to have them to Daniel for Worlds. So if you're at awesome. Worlds, please find the guys and make sure you get your Gator Tot sticker. I'm probably just going to order a bunch of stickers. I think everybody likes the stickers. Um, yeah, I don't think the need tokens. Them. I still have some. Um, the tokens are great. Um, I because as Jason was like, I don't have a bystander for camo, and I was like, Gator Tot, like, yeah. yes. I was like, boom. Um, but I think everybody loves the stickers. They could put them on their box or bag or wherever. Yeah, so. I, I did. I did get some requests for tokens. Okay. I I don't have. Yes. Much left. I might have to just. I make think a... I still have like four or five left, so okay. we can. We can get those. I, out as we can. I actually ended up giving away my token. <gasps> oh, I guess I have to replace yours first. TJ. <laughs> because, well. Uh, well, he cares about the community. You got you to do what you got to do for the community. I know. I so, Alec, if, you want a, if you want an action token, uh, see me at Worlds. I'll get you one. I feel like we should sign some. Just like sign some random ones and just like hand them sure. out. Um, but I won't be there. So I know. FOMO. Gosh. So you have to pre-sign them. I mean, yeah, like, you know, you know, in the chat when I said like Sam's secretly gonna like drive down to Memphis on Saturday morning and show up and whoop some ass, like, I'm highly considering it. <laughs> um, I would, I would definitely ask for an order of a couple, especially signed ones, um, if if Mister if Mister Gator allows it. <laughs> Mr. Uh, his Mr. Tot actually. Mr. Tot. <laughs> Luckily, Gator Tots, all of Gator Tots PR things go through me, so that is I get to make. Um, and yes, that is that is. A you should make a Whiz Kids like announcement about it. <laughs> oh, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad we got through the Gator Tot. Um, so now we have a bunch of questions. Um, Anthony Barnstable, I think, wrote like a four-page question book for us. That but, sounds like Anthony. <laughs> um, we might have to just record a whole podcast of just Anthony Barnstable questions. Um, so Peter Marshfield, um, he said, first I'd like to give Az a thank you for making his way out to the World Qualifier at the end of July. Um, Az, you did very well. Congrats, man. With a team Thanks. that you're like, I'm just going to go 0-4 with. Like, My team was literally titled "This is probably a mistake." <laughs> it was a mistake until Top Cut. Oh, it was not a mistake until Top Cut. <laughs> I still almost won that game too. It was very close. Wow, so proud of you! Yeah, you took Wolverine real. You took a team that I think no one really expected and did well with it. So, congrats. Thank you. Um. So, looking at pre Masters of Time, what figures are we are that are being overlooked for modern play? Um, what do you think for swaps for Butterfly with Memo T being legal? So, uh, so uh, I'm sorry. What was the Butterfly question? Uh, the Butterfly says with Memo T being legal, how does the Butterfly swaps change for your build if you're running the Butterfly? I don't think it does. I don't think it does. Like, I still think you do Mern is, Cosmo. It's just Mern. Yeah, like, Mern is still the best butterfly option. I mean, Mern and Merlin. What more do you need? Exactly, he TJ. He won't be legal anymore, sir. <gasps> womp womp. That's Get it. him out of here. He That's stinks. it. There's this this you know format called Silver Age. Yeah, nobody's playing him in that format. Oh, <laughs> you literally just did that. I didn't. Like just a couple months ago. I didn't play him. You played him. I don't even play it in silver. I said nobody's playing him in that form. Uh, I only play Murder Machine in silver. <laughs> I, machine. I, I had like yeah. three Murder Machine builds before settling on my mystical team. I yep. I only I only play I only play the Dark Knight chases in silver. They're all ter- They're not great except for Murder Machine. Yeah, but... Murder Machine legit. Like, like I'm looking through the fifty point less characters in Master of Time. Like if. There's anything super relevant? And it's uh, like, maybe Green Man. What about maybe... Cave? What about Caveman Wally West? How do you guys feel about him? 
He's good. Uh, the ten attack really hinders him, but yeah. the three uh, the three square opponents can't use super senses in three squares is really really nice. The thing is, but you gotta get him up there. He can never, he can never do that against a Mystics character. His his speed power. Oh yeah, I see that. He'll die. <laughs> He will. <laughs> yep, he kind of just dies. Is Mystic's not after resolutions? So it is, but if you do give him any action as free, so the action has to resolve. After he, goes the, he goes to click 8, then takes the Mystics. Oh, this is, and then after resolutions, turn the most recently noted click number. No, no, so no. All after, after, after resolutions, resolution. you may note his current click number and turn him to click 8. That a hypersonic is now resolved. He takes one Mystic's damage. Oh, <laughs> okay, so yeah. no, no, says, yeah. It was worth it. Oh, I got right. you. So you can't do Mystic's first. You could do it right. on the bottom. Right. Gotcha. Because your your opponents, your effects, then your opponent's effects. Gross. Um, yeah, that's fair. So it's like, yeah, he's good, but like I, that would kill him. <laughs> I think Green Man is probably a fine option for a butterfly swap if you can't just play him main force. Mm -hmm. Um, that's probably the only one that I'm looking at. Like, I mean, oh, he's so good. I'm like reading him again. I'm like, oh, I just forgot how good he was. I just again. can't see anything else. Like, Blue Beetle Prime, but who's not going to play it at full? Play a main force at 75. Yeah. Like... Okay. Yeah. So he also Is asked. Arrow good at no. 50. No, he's not. Okay. So yeah. Peter Marshall yeah. also asked. Mar Martin's the best butterfly. Period. Let's just. Yeah, yeah that's um, it. With um, Emmett's tomb being so popular to build with, why would we not see more Zod, Ursa, Nan getting played? Does it just not get played because of its keywords? Um, I think Emmett's tomb is going to be changed or on a certain <laughs> list that's coming out. <laughs> so. Uh. I agree with that. I think they're going to... I Sorry, I'm not going to... No, go ahead. <laughs> no, I just... I, I think they're just going to change it to what it was probably intended to be. Like, it's probably going to be changed to, like, one action per character or something. It's just going to slow it down. I don't think it's going to be completely banned. I think they're just going to slow it down a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so, I actually... I have I have some insight on this as far as, like, why Zodder Sanon is not played more often, as I recently tried to build with him. Um, it's actually really easy to build a team with them and get them out. And then it was brought to my attention uh, that something I did not realize is your opponent can force them out. Mm. Your opponent can destroy blocking to remove their token. Thus, forcing them out. And you really want to be able to deploy them on your turn so that like they're deployed across the map. So you have another attacker. Uh, your opponent can either force them out so you have to put them in a, in a bad position or can force them out into a spot where they can actually kill them. Oh, they kind of stink on top. Like, not stink, but seven They're side really good if you can great. them in your opponent's face. Yeah, but when you're forced to put it on your side, they have a hard time getting up. I see. Correct. Plus, yeah. they're 70 points. That's a lot. It's, it's 70 points that you don't get to play with, but, like, the team that I built could literally bring them out on turn. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Then don't they just die? <clears throat> yeah. They have two stop clicks. Yeah. But it's like five damage to the first one, and then they just penetrate psychic blast twice, and you're, you die. Probably. And lose 70 points. But I just so don't think they're why... good. I think the reason that played is because they're not good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think they're fine. Like, they're fine figures. They're a fine figure. I just don't think that you, if you had more consistent deployment on them, I think it would be better. And, and does anybody want sidestep penetrating psychic blast? Like, they have traded flurry. Yeah, and know. they don't really get to. They don't really ever get tokened up. They they're never tokened because so it was ruled because they go to the card. They maintain any equipment and buffs that the character had when they went to the card. So they would still maintain white shirt quarter buff. They would maintain equipment. Uh, they could just you could bring them out as a fourteen for like five, flurrying somebody. Woof. But that person has to be standing in exactly the right place. <laughs> right well, place, right control. time. You, you, they either generate on the edge of a map or next to a debris marker that was generated this turn. Right. Not that hard to do. 
because it's a lot of effort for, you know, Kong just smashed better. Sure. I mean, that's 100% <laughs> that, 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 that's, sure. a, that's the reason I'm not playing. Kong just smashes better. <laughs> that's the smash is better. And then he also asked, um, are you looking forward to a modern where we don't automatically have to start with our bills with 50 points of Scott Porter? Yes. And the answer is yes. 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 Um, uh, nothing, I mean, I love the re-roll for Scott Porter, but I also hate the re-roll for Scott Porter because, like, you go up, you need an eight, you hit the eight out of all the probs, and then they roll the super senses, and they miss it, and you're like, okay, sweet. And then they're like, I'm going to black shirt Porter re-roll it, and then they hit it. And you're just like, ugh. It just hurts so bad. <laughs> Yeah, I'm actually kind of looking forward to non theme. I, I know, like, that's probably not the best answer, especially with map being so important and characters like Blackheart existing kind of make it hard for you to justify going second. But it non theme is kind of fun. I think there's, I not I don't know if any off the top of my head, but I'm sure there's pieces out there that synergize really well together but aren't on the same keyword. Uh, Blue Beetle and Mern. Yup. And Major Logan. And Major Logan. Oh, I already yeah. tried to build that team. <laughs> Major um, Logan. So the, the benefit to the non-theme is you just get to play all the best figures. Um, you aren't yes. limited by theme. The thing is, is like they've given so many of the best keywords, the best figures already, that just building theme was easy. Um, and Porter's obviously just kind of forced it. Um, I do think theme teams will still be important after they're, they're gone. I miss theme Makes team props. Sense. I miss theme team props. I'll just say it. I do too. I liked it. I mean, and, and it's just it was just three. It wasn't like we were had like seven. Like it was just three. It was kind of nice. Like hashtag bring back theme team props. Nah, we don't need. Did somebody anymore. just hear Tyler. <laughs> Did Tyler just wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, this uh, this weirdo Alec as Alex or Alec uh, Mooser asked some questions here, um, <laughs> but he says if, <laughs> if MOT becomes legal, which we know it's not becoming legal, um, how contested is the prime slot? And there are so many great primes right now, like Elsa, Blue Beetle, Spidey, A Man, Colossus. Camo, all the other yeah. ones he listed. <laughs> um, I love Camo. I I want to build with him so bad. You should check out the build that I've got Jason playing. You know, I I gotta have to go through that whole chat and find all those. That's gonna be do you? Because you can literally just say, "Hey guys, send me Camo to you," and I'll be like, <laughs> "Okay, you're <laughs> I love him. I think he's fun to play. Um. He's a pain to play against, so. Blue Beetle and Elsa for Mystical. I feel like that's the hardest one to pick. Because they, well, because of point ver points versus, like, I don't know. Blue Beetle does a lot for the points, but also just kind of gets, gets monkeyed on. Not he's a he flyer. Not if he removes the monkey from the game. It's also true, yeah. <laughs> you, could also, you could also just say, like, hey, no charge, by the way. Yeah, but, well, the, so the build that I... The build that I was working on um, had going first had guarantee kill one Kong regardless of D6 rule. Mm. Um, because you play him with Green Man, you port him out with Blackheart, you say no impervious, you shoot him, you roll the D6 first. If you don't hit the five or six, you activate Green Man's once per game, no stop, and just kill him. That makes sense. Um, we're actually, uh, my locals are running a 300 point tournament on sun, uh, on Sunday and it's going to be all post world 300 modern. So I'm excited to, cause I actually have, I have this blue beetle. I'm actually really excited to try it out. Um, like especially against Kong. That's, that's just the big thing. How does it stand up against Kong? I think it stands up super good. No, so it does specifically. So again, with that build, I was also playing King Jefferson. Okay. Um, Jefferson with allows you to double I, that the team that I built has triple barrier. Um, oh yeah. 
Maybe so you don't, you don't have super strength. Uh, it's really hard to get through checkerboard barrier. Oh yeah! Ouch! Yeah, that really does stink. <laughs> um, yeah, I this is not a prime, but I really like Tim Hunter. I'm really high on him. He's the one that can force crit hits and crit misses. He's the one that has prob twice per turn when it's not your turn, and he takes one unavoidable damage if he's. Oh, he's the legacy. Yeah, legacy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's Clock King. I think you're thinking about. No, it's Rip Hunter. Is the. Oh, Rip Hunter. Yes, yes, yes. Rip Hunter. He's also very interesting. I've been looking at him too. Yeah, he can just force a crit hit. Like you can plan out a crit hit or a crit miss. Yeah, and he's got traded prob, um, and require future and past keywords require no action to, uh, with no extra tokens. Do not require line of fire when using probability control, which is fine. But it's, it's I mean it's really good. But this is a good forty point legacy. Yeah, I really like him because he just kind of. He's like peepers. He gives you enhancement, and you have to hit him. F well, minus pulse wave, but you have to hit him one, two, three, four times to kill him. Yep. I think he's very good, and plus the enhancement's really nice too. With blue beetles, especially. Mhm. Mm but anyways, that's not that's not a prime figure. Sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to give my boy Tim Hunter a shout yeah, out. Yeah, Alec, we were talking really about good. primes. We were talking about primes. So we're not. I'm just kidding. Oh, I'm sorry. I digress. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Who asked this question? <laughs> yeah, who asked this question? Um, <laughs> so uh, he also asked, how great is auto sideline Poseidon for Kongs and it makes water on maps and from bug terrain a tad more relevant? Um, Poseidon is great. Both yeah, it's very great. Um, I think if you run Kongs or a lot of Quake, you I think one of the you put Poseidon on your team, and then you always not always, but I think you have Atlantis Throne Room on in your map selection just in case because that's six reach, exploit weakness, giant re, uh, see through care. I think that's really good. Yeah. Mhm. Mm I think there's going to be a lot of shakeups. Um, Ed. Ed A B asks, uh, "Why not three Kongs?" And that's that's a very viable question, Ed. There, there is actual there's there's a legitimate answer to this. <laughs> is it because Blackheart can only take two Kongs? Yes. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> you play you play three Kongs. <laughs> hey, listen, three Kongs, two Blackhearts, and a Murr. <laughs> you just go. You just go, son. You just monkey up. <laughs> monkey up. <laughs> Okay. And just take take the Mern with you, and then you're just like, okay, come on, Mern, you're coming along with us. Well, you could have one Blackheart, have him have Blackheart boop everybody up, and then take an action to move Blackheart back, so that when the second after the second first wave of Kongs, you have a second wave of Kongs coming next turn. Alec, this is a podcast about just non-educational hero clicks. Um, we don't be smart like That's that. Not <laughs> Not that smart. I, I'm just like, it's just like, all right, go ahead and try and kill these cogs. You got two more coming. As long as I'm here, this is definitely not a non-educational podcast. <laughs> no, I, I don't think it's a bad. I don't think three cogs is. Well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll Kongs save little, judgment. I, I think even now, three cogs is a kill. I think it's, those fifty points are better spent elsewhere. Well, they got fifty points of Scott Porter. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. but after rotation, I mean, if they don't really do anything to Kong, then so why there's not? Your answer. It's why it's only why two Kongs, Kongs because you need to have a prob and another reroll. And two perplexes. Because you might crit miss three times in a row. Oh. Oof. That was LTVH, if you're listening. That was hard to watch. Yeah. So funny. um I really hope you went all like um ham on those dice and like threw them across the street at Gen Con or something, you know. Um So um I don't know that he did that because when we played in the last round of Clicks Bowl, he may have crit missed and then probed and rolled another crit miss. With those same dice? I'm assuming. I would melt them. I would straight up melt them and just, oh my gosh. 
It was hard. I, I felt so bad. But I was like, it is a dice game. It is a dice game, but... I think but, he... Uh, also, they're team playing this triple crit It's a 3% yes. chance. Like, I watched... I, I mean, I didn't watch the match live, but, like, when you guys were like, he crit missed three times, I went back and watched it, and it was just like... You know, you watch somebody like crit miss, like, okay, that happened. Click. And then it's like, let's go for a second attack. Crit miss. And you're like, ha, huh, that's funny. Ha, huh, way to go. And you click. And then you do it a third time. And it's like your soul leaves your body. Yeah. And it's like. For anybody that doesn't know, it wasn't just three crit misses in the game. It was three crit misses and three consecutive attacks. Yes, it was just on the same turn. Like, boom, boom, boom. I was like, oh, my gosh. So, I sorry. Oh. Go ahead. Statistically, because I like statistics. Yeah. Roll, rolling a two, rolling a two with two d six is one thirty six chance. Yes. Doing that three times in a row is one in forty six thousand six hundred and fifty two fifty six, uh, four hundred. Oh, sorry, forty six thousand six hundred and fifty six. Yes. Yeah. The odds of being struck by lightning are one in fifteen thousand and three hundred. It is three times more likely to be struck by lightning than it is the roll three back to back crit misses. <laughs> So it's it's like one of those like lucky but unfortunate lucky. Oh gosh, and it's just like oh. oh, it was heartbreaking. Oh, and I mean he was playing against Daniel, and I can say that. Like I mean it's not LTVH is a great guy, is a great player. Yes. Like you just don't like to see that happen in the game, but it's just like oh man, like I've only seen it happen to me once, like back to back crit misses, but. That's happened once in my entire time. Like, and that was my opponent doing it, so. And I was like, I don't even have a pro. I didn't have a prob in play to, like, even prob him. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry, man. Like, I don't have a prob. I would prob you, because that's just bad luck. But. I think after hearing that match, I realized, like, okay, so if I hit one character, I should probably just leave it if I have not many probs left. Because... <laughs> That yeah, I don't want to crit miss. That was that I was even in that match, and I learned something from that match. I'm like, okay, so I hit one character, and that's I have really... zero probs left. Probably that's should just let it go. That's a good point to bring up because, like, when we were wa- I, so, um, just uh, some info. I had tested positive for COVID last week, um, which absolutely was so mad. Uh, I went four years without testing positive for it. I felt absolutely fine. But so all I could do over the weekend was watch Clicks games um, and follow Clicks stuff. So Devin Owens and Jackson uh, Smith and I watched all of the games that were streamed on Saturday. Um, and we had this conversation of so many players in the Clicks game just have this, I can't let you ever hit me. And so they will prob and prob and prob and use all of their probs and not actually analyze, like, this isn't hitting any of my important figures. I should probably just let this go. Mm-hmm. So keep that in mind. You do not have to use all of your probs to make your opponent miss everybody. Because, like what happened to Jason, he probed them, had no rerolls left, and they crit hit. Mm-hmm. He wasn't, they weren't hitting the important figures. And then he got crit hit. Yep. Yeah, and you just so seen it in one of Daniel's games. He, I think it was against LTVH. He like rolled like a six or seven. And he was like, that only hits Porter. And he's like, that's fine. Like, yep. I mean, and he's going to need to roll an eight to hit everything else. So he's like, no, I'm fine. I'll just, I'll hit that character. And then he went on to his next attack. Like, that's a very good topic to bring yep. up. So, yeah, statistics are really big. I feel mm. like in this game. Well, we just—I mean, it was like history. It's like watching history being made at that time, because <laughs> I mean, you had two titans going after it, and to watch what happened was just—it was like once in a lifetime to be able to see it. And I feel for LTVH. And Especially I hope... because like, LTVH was in serious, like, I think, in control of that game. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. That was LTVH, 
Marcus Marcus's game to lose. Yeah. I think he had to hit a five, right? It was yeah. a really low number. He needed a five. He needed a five. And so Jeez. Um yeah. But anyway, uh Jeff Dumas um asked, Whatever happened to Ass's three Pegasus cap team? Yeah, mm. what happened to that ass? Uh, well, it turns out that man, that team had zero reach. <laughs> still existed. So we couldn't play that bill. And then Ghost Rider came out. Yeah. Yeesh. And I was like, oh, should probably put this on the shelf. Gotcha. Uh, <laughs> it's probably fine on small maps now, but like, I guess this caps just get smashed by Kong. Because mm-hmm. they fly. Yep. Yeah, and they kind but, of drop really quickly, too. Yeah, I do, if, I do love Pegasus Caps, though. I think he's one of my favorite figures in Modern. I just don't think he's really playable right now. Other now, than, like, Matt Frazier, who played him on Avengers. I had a really good deployment with him. Now, I think, depending on what they do, if, if they do anything to Kong or what they do, I think he could be good. But I think it yeah. needs to be seen what's, what's going to come of the month. Yeah, and that's yeah. why I mentioned, like, Pat uh, Pat Frazier played them at Gen Con, played on an Avengers team uh, with Time Breakers to deploy them, and then played the Super Air Spider-Man to give them a wild card so that they could mm-hmm. copy Super Senses. One had the motorcycle, uh, or they could copy Spider-Man. One had the motorcycle on Super Senses, the other one had Bucky's arm, so it had Senses on a six. Um, and so, like, he was able to give them defensive options, and then going first, they can just kill Kong. Um, okay. I thought that was really cool. Um, but then he lost to Double Kong because they got smashed. So... <laughs> if that happens. So, let's get through some like of... That. Let's get some of, through of these uh, Anthony questions, because, my gosh, Anthony, like... Ooh. Anthony, love that man. <laughs> love that man. But my he, muse! That's what I call him. He's got, uh, he's got nice. a lot of questions. So, opinions on teams played at Nats. My opinion, way too much Kong. Like, wish there was more diverse diversity. Yeah, ook, ook. Ook, ook. Uh, um, I knew there wasn't going to be more diversity. I, there was a, I'm actually surprised that there were less Kong. I expected 80% of Kong teams in top eight. Of, or 80% of top eight being double Kong teams. That's what I expected. That's fair. Um, did the winner of initiative rolls ultimately matter? I think we just we talked about that already about the yeah. the map and initiative. Um, yep. Favorite aspects of fan appreciation night? TJ, Alec, did you guys go to fan appreciation? I did not. We had some pretty heavy smack talkers in our uh, group that wanted to play Smash Bros. Who all thought they were very <laughs> good. So I had to humble them. <laughs> Oh, know that they are not very good at the smash as they thought. Alex is um, so just nice. He's like, I just had to humble them. Like, <laughs> listen, uh, yeah, like I will never say, I'll never say anything about hero clicks because that's diff- like it's because some you can have the best setup in the world and you can crit miss three times, mm-hmm. but Smash Bros is a different story. Um, but yeah, so I smash ultimate or smash or melee, uh, ultimate, um. Just yeah, that's the one that I'm well not most familiar with. I played a lot of melee and Smash Four. Who's uh, uh who's your character of choice? Who's your fighter? So back when I used to go to tournaments it was Pac Man. Um nice. yeah. but um eventually I just was like, Yeah, I just don't really care anymore, so I just I play whatever, but Doctor Mario's been my go to. I just think he's super goofy. Love it. <laughs> I uh I was trying to main Sephiroth for a while. Um, he's good. He's got terrible frame data, but he, yeah, uh, he's real floaty. He's real light. Yeah, but he's good. He's just got some really bad matchups, unfortunately. Yeah, agreed. Sam, it's... I don't know what happened. Sorry, we, we, we did Smash Bros podcast. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I don't. This is a call to action. Bros. If <laughs> if anyone's out there listening to this thinks they are good at Smash Bros, I will. And you beat. I mean, you could beat me. That's great. But like, let's. I would totally love to play you in Smash Bros. I, <laughs> 
<laughs> That's the invitation. But I'm not gonna lie. But... I kind of want to bring a TV and like switch down to worlds and just be like, "All right, Alec has called out the whole HeroClix community on Smash Bros. <laughs> Let's go." Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I beat us all. That, okay, that would be crazy. But I'm sure there's some super good players. Now, do I'm I sure get to amongst... do I get to do like live commentating at like kind of like Snoop Dogg did for badminton and Olympics? Like, oh, he's fighting. He's fighting. He punched here. Oh, he's jumping. He he fell off. Like, do I get I mean, to do that kind of commentary? Absolutely. Smash Bros. commentary is actually really fun to watch. <laughs> I love it. Yes. Like, I don't know Smash Bros. is real fun. To watch. I uh, yeah, that's the uh, that's the scene I I follow the most from afar. I don't play in it, but I watch it quite yeah. a bit. I I used to follow Mewtwo King a lot when I was trying to get good with Marth and Melee. Man, man, it's, he was sorry. I don't want to. I don't want to <laughs> go off track, but man, that was a great time in Melee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Five, five Gods is, is Iggy because it's funny. Heck yeah! <laughs> I know some good Bowser Juniors out there and Iggy players. Don't get me wrong. He's he's. If you don't know how to play against him, he can wreck your world. Hey, Iggy uh, and Wario are my go-to's. So, but ba- uh, Bowser Junior is baby Bowser. Okay, let's just get that right. Baby Bowser. He's yep. Ba- he's baby Bowser. That's what that's, that's what that's what we call him. So I mean, he was from the game Baby Mario, right? So that just kind of makes sense. Yeah, I think so. I, I would say so. I, I'm not too heavy on the Mario lore myself, but it, it's or funny. Wait, or was that Yoshi story that he was in? I don't know. It, Yoshi, uh, Super Mario World, Yoshi's Island Two. Yeah. Okay. With Baby Mario, where the Yoshis have to escort Baby Mario. And they just cry and cry and yeah. cry. I love those yeah. games. Those games are great. It's just funny because, like, my brother-in-law is, like, a huge Mario fan. And I love Mario. And we always just, like, one day I called him. I was like, yeah, it's Baby Bowser. And he's like, it's Bowser Jr. I'm like, it's Baby Bowser. And, like, and then, like, Mario, like, Luigi, we call him Green Mario. Like, <laughs> and he gets so mad. We're like, Green oh. Mario. <laughs> this will be, be my last thing on Smash Brothers. Alec, if you've never watched it, Go on YouTube and search There Will Be Brawl. Okay. Uh, maybe I haven't watched this. It is a... So, it was made by Matthew Mercer when he was, like, much younger. He nearly he said he even nearly killed himself doing it because he did all of the editing, all of the production, all of the casting. He did everything. It is a noir film series. Oh, the Escapist. Yes. Set like a zero movie. punctuation? Yes. Oh, heck yeah. I'm all about this. Yeah, it's so good. It's so fun. I'll have to peep it out. Oh, there's a Bible verse in the front, so we'll have to get yeah. It's okay. uh, <laughs> it's real. It it's very adult. Yeah, I yeah, I could uh, if it's the escapist, I could imagine. <laughs> um. Yeah. Anyways, all right. okay. All that to say, TJ, I did, did you... not go to the event appreciation event. <laughs> okay. Let's circle it back around here. Okay, We're back to hero clicks, TJ. Fan appreciation. What was your like favorite takeaway? Uh, so two things. One, like their ability to take the feedback in, and they're making notes up there, and they just let the community talk to them during the event too. Like they weren't were just telling us news; they were also letting us give direct feedback straight to the top of the HeroClix lane, and that's awesome. Nice. And everybody on the stage was taking notes. So that's, that's might be why we quickly see erratas and stuff coming afterward because they're listening to us now. That's, yep. that's uh, awesome also, to hear. Yeah. I got to hold Jugger Duck. Jugger Duck. Heck yeah. <laughs> so that was my personal favorite part. That is cool. I know. I saw some of those pictures. I was like, those are some good looking sculpts. So. Yes, I'm very excited for all of the new things. The sculpt quality has really jumped up in modern yeah, days. Um, but something uh, I'll, I'll, with what TJ said, I didn't get to go to fan appreciation, obviously, because I wasn't in con. Um, but I want to give a big shout-out. Uh, I doubt he's going to listen to this show, but maybe he will. I want to give a huge shout-out to Ryan. Um, Ryan uh, Opolk, I think, is the last name. I never remember his last name. Uh, he's been the event manager, uh, the new event manager for WizKids. Um, WizKids has, or HeroClix has 
the ship is righted since he stepped in. Like, he has been an absolute wonder to our community. And just big shout out to him and, and what he and his team have worked on getting yes. this game back on track. Mm-hmm. It's, it's nice to see that they're, like, showing... They're actually bringing sculpts out now for people mm-hmm. to see of stuff. And uh, it's not just pictures, not just slides and saying, oh, yeah, well, this is coming out. Like, it's actually like, here, this is some cool stuff to to see that we're doing and we're listening. And so, and I think we can yeah. see that um, just in our events. So, uh, favorite aspects of Hero Clicks at Gen Con, uh, booth and events. I wish, now I wasn't at Gen Con, but... I don't know, like, I just wish at Gen Con um, they would bring out back some of, like, the 2v2 Battle Royales. I loved doing those. Like, Ooh, you, well, how like, does that work? Well, like, I mean, Dale and I played in a couple, like, when we first started playing, and, like, you would just have a partner, and, like, you would each get some boosters, and then you'd play against another team of two, so you get to play with your buddy. So, like, I would build a team, and Dale would build a team of these boosters, and, like, it'd be my turn. And if I had, like, a bunch of, like, support pieces, like, perplex and outwits, like, I could perplex up Daniel's attack and stuff. Like, be that support for Daniel's team. And then he would attack. And then, like, you play against the other team. Like, together. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So you're playing, like, in the same Battle Royale faction where it's 2v2 on one map. Yeah. So you're basically playing against, yeah. But that I mean, sounds they, like a lot of fun. I mean, it would. It was a lot of fun. I wish they would bring that back to some, like, formation. I don't know. Um, and I always like the side events. Like, they always did like the theme event or like special. Like, the back in the day, they had like you had a, three hundred points of, only these certain keywords and. It was just neat yeah, to it's see. Like the old, like, they called it like pulp, but it was before we had modernized pulp. Yeah. Pulper. So you kind of like had to think of like some weird teams. Like you had to play some. Like I think one of the teams I played was um, it had to be like all close combat pieces. So, I mean, you didn't have to deal with. It was just a big smash. Smash game like it was great but um i would love to see some more of those events brought back but that's just me yeah, it sounds I, like a lot of fun um, my, my input with that would be i would like to see uh the national championships for hero clicks go back to a traditional tournament um, yeah. i think the current format that they have is actually not good um, at Gen Con, and if it is a Gen Con limitation for them to run Nationals as a traditional format or tournament, then it might maybe it should not be housed at Gen Con, and that's going to be like my one negative piece. Of it. Mm. Um, just we did talk to Ryan about that. Actually, he asked us about it, that and he said he said yeah. everyone hates this pod format, right? And resounding <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, it's awful. So you just you have even some of the best players in the game don't get to actually like they don't get out of qualifiers. You can't make a mistake. Yeah. X ones don't get there are X ones that don't get out of qualifiers. Yeah. It's yes. just, I mean you have to go at least two and one and with high points. With high points. Like, you mess yep. up, you're just done. Like, it's yeah. rough. I, I've, that's, that format <laughs> for Nationals is why I have not made going to Gen Con any bit of a priority for the last two years. Mm-hmm. Not to mention, like, it the, the spots fill up so quick even when the slots are available. Like, yeah. as soon as you, like, lose a game, people were buying slots for the next event and the next two events yep. just in case. And I don't think that's a really good practice. I, I'm all about, like, the second chance qualifiers and stuff like that. But 
Which I would just rather have, yeah, like five or like whatever round of Swiss. I don't know what the exact what number is a good number four or five. I would assume, but yeah, I, yeah, okay, yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, I just it's just hard because some people are, you know, buying tickets for the next events and stuff like that, and it it kind of doesn't really incentivize for you to do good in your pool. Like I don't know how mm-hmm. else to explain that. It's just I don't like that practice so, personally. And on top of that. Gen Con is expensive, both yes. financially and in time me- time investment. Mm-hmm. To go to, to go to Gen Con and get to play three games of HeroClix when you went there specifically to play HeroClix, that's bad. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Feels bad. Like, if I go two and one and didn't get out of my qualifier and then could not get in another qualifier, that's a waste of a trip. Yeah, you're stuck there for days. I understand that other people will go to Gen Con because, like, there's a lot to do. I personally don't really enjoy Gen Con other than, like, for the specific reasons of why I'm going there. But that's a me thing. Um, But if I'm spending my money and my time, I want to be there playing, doing the things that I went there for. Yeah. Mm. (laughs) Makes sense. So, um, feelings on Masters of Time. I think we kind of all expressed our feelings that we believe it's going to be a really, really good set, um, yep. both in sealed and for modern. Agreed. And collectability. And like the Jurassic, I know the Jurassic Rats are just like awesome looking. Mm-hmm. Flash Raptor. Yeah, he's cool. I was fortunate to pull him, and he's really cool. Like, he just looks awesome. And even the Green Lantern one looks awesome. Yeah, I can't wait to put one of the Jurassic uh, Wonder Woman's on my uh, desk, and like my first employee's like, "What in the world is that?" I'm like, "Actually, it's a Triceratops as Wonder Woman." So, <laughs> let's go. Um, yeah, I got lucky and got the Bat Walker out of my oh heck yeah, Jurassic that's so cool. Cool. oh that's cool. And he's so cool looking. Like, yeah, the Flash Raptor might be my favorite though. Yeah. So, um, Anthony also asked, are there any pre-Worlds announcements that rulings are needed? Um, I'm just going to, we've already kind of said what we believe mm-hmm. should be on there, or we think is going to be on there. It is in the hands of WizKids now. Yep. We are, we're going to let you make the rulings. You kind of know, I think you've probably heard a ton of opinion on it. So, you guys are smart, you'll make the right decisions. I will continue to have my faith in WizKids um, until the new regime makes me believe that I can no longer have faith in them. The new the new direction that this game has gone, they have my full support. I will continue to believe, have faith. I agree. So he asked us, what are you looking forward to at Worlds? I mean... Team. You, you, I won't, mean it's... you won't have me as... You'll have, I know. I'll have a um, second best Daniel, but it's fine. Second best Daniel? <laughs> Who's the first best Daniel? Well, I'm first best, like, but he's well, second best. You're, you're, but you're first best Sam. Well, first best, like, you have the first oh, best. Second she best. meant to say she meant to say second best pal. That makes some more sense. Okay, yeah, pal, Daniel, <laughs> we're one and the same. <laughs> we are. We, we will. We will be sad that you will not be with. It's us. funny though. Like I am. I feel like I've kind of made it in the community that like I used to be. Oh, you're Daniel's wife. Like I, that's all I heard was you're Daniel's wife. Now it's like you're Sam. Like I have made it to people know my name. <laughs> so like yeah. you were to be. You were the person that I still had their dice for the longest time. I know. <laughs> I was so sad when I lost those ties too. <laughs> then they were cursed forever. That's because I touched them. Yeah. yeah. Um, Alec, are you going to Worlds? What are you looking for? Uh, probably not. Um, <gasps> I think next year I would probably do Worlds over Gen Con just for the fact of pricing yeah. and also there's just so many international players that I talk to online that I haven't met in person yet. And there's just a lot of people who probably just coming to Gen Con isn't really their thing anyway. It's kind of like how Az is. So I think I would go to Worlds next year. But I think this year is just a little too uh, hard for me to go. It's kind of, we have a nine-month-old also. So 
just kind of hard to travel around in general. To it's funny the one the the year I get really serious of doing competitive hero clicks, I have a a little <laughs> a little kid, so it's been really. It's hard for me too. I was really missing my kids. I was kind of like, man, I hope I lose so I can go home. <laughs> it's kind of like I miss my kids <laughs> or my kid and my wife, of course. But probably not this year. But if I were to go, I think the things that I would be excited for were would obviously be the modern tournament. Um, but also, I think Team Sealed is just so much fun. It is a really Teams fun is the time. best format in the game, in my opinion. I agree. It's, I agree. It's a lot of fun. Um, what are our opinions on the Dial H player ranking system? Um, I'm number. I was number two, so hey, I I like it. I don't even think I saw my name on there, so I am totally okay with that. <laughs> that's, um, that's it. I'm like, I'm not on it, so it must be right. Yeah, weren't that's you, exactly. Like, for like, weren't you like tied for fifty second or something like that? That was in. I, well, oh, one, that I was player I was of the year. Looking. That was player of the year. Yeah, in modern, I'm not ranked. Yeah. Well, TJ, we're just I yeah, we just about modern this year. Yeah, we just suck. You guys TJ. just don't play enough. That's the real point. That's the real point. Like you guys just don't play enough. <laughs> well, it's like a two-hour drive to go play somewhere right now. I know. It's mm. just... Yeah. Okay. I mean, I guess I could use roll twenty. That's a. I need to do better about that. Digital dice. Yeah. Love it. I um, just, yeah. I, I like it. It's cool. I, um. So, oh, go ahead. No, I, I was just going to say, so I, I draw my comparisons to how Heroclix has, like, tournaments and stuff, to how, like, it, it's funny, we talked about it earlier, but, like, Smash Bros. has tournaments and has player rankings, but then, like, the Pokemon uh, scene also does that. A lot of a lot of stuff has these player rankings, and I've always wondered to myself, like, why isn't there a, P, like, a PR ranking for Heroclix? So this has been kind of cool. And honestly, none of it surprised me. Like, I think... Mm-hmm. I think that's based off of percentages, so it's like okay, like the numbers don't lie. There's also not been a lot of ton, a ton of tournaments that people can like go to and stuff like that. Um, but I think I, I mean, I thought it was pretty accurate. I mean, I was like, yep, that makes sense. I mean, there's some people that I was like, okay, they're maybe a little bit low or maybe they're a little bit high. But overall, I, I love that kind of stuff. I think it's, I think it's awesome. I like how it's uh, yeah, it's like. Was, um... I have like how it's based on like stats. Like I know in yeah. the past it's kind of been like a specific, you know, hey, it's before world, we've got a ranking out, and I think it was kind of like objective. Um, yeah, you know, like it was or subjective to like you know beliefs, but um, I don't it, know. It'd be it, it'd be interesting to hear other players make their own. Which I don't know if you want to get into that can of worms, but it'd be funny to have like a bunch of people make their own lists and see where that compares to like where okay statistically this is what this is what the numbers say, but this is what the players say. It's it's mm-hmm. um it's a very touchy subject though because yeah yeah I, I get that <sighs> no matter what you do you're gonna like make somebody mad and <laughs> yeah <laughs> like. selfishly I wish they'd gone back into last year for st- rock states. Yeah, you would have been, like, top five there, TJ. Yeah. yeah. The furthest they went back was, like, December of last year, starting with the Champion Clicks trial. I right. literally played oh, one right. event, so, like, that's why I wasn't on there. <laughs> Same. Um, oh, man. But when I was, uh, I was, I play Flesh and Blood competitively as a card game. Um, and they use an ELO system, so I was, when, when I heard that there was, somebody was doing ELO systems for Clicks, I was like, Oh, that's really cool. Now I can track things in two games. Yeah. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Plus, well, like, chess has ELO, so, like, it kind of correlates uh, the same kind of way. Okay. So, um, I'm just scanning through these questions. We'll have to just... Anthony, we'll answer some more of these questions on the next podcast. Um <laughs> So um, he says, well, in what order would you rank each Hero Clicks event this year so far? Um, I haven't been to any, Anthony, so I can't really rank anything. You were champion clicks. I didn't play. I played in teams. That's it. Yeah, you were there, though. That was an event. Okay. Cool. Like, so I mean, you have champion clicks, Rock Cup, Nationals, Worlds. Origins. Adepticon. Origins and Adepticon. Yep. 
I'm a little uh, partial to Origins. I loved Origins. I liked the con, and I love the format they did. So, yeah, I agree. I liked Origins. I, I enjoyed Rock Cup. If it hadn't been a million degrees, I probably would have enjoyed it a lot more. Yeah. Uh, it's nice to play in not... events that you don't have to pay for. Like, like Gen Con, you had to pay for a, a badge. I mean, Origins, I know you had to, but it wasn't as expensive. And it was easier to yeah. travel to and get around. Um, so, I think my, as a uh... center, we just like the events that we can go to play a whole weekend, and leave. Yeah. My ranking would be Champion Clicks at the top, uh, because it's basically my vacation as well. Um, and David and I cannot remember the guy who owns House Rule Gamings. Um, they put on an f- amazing event. Like, in my opinion, second to none. Um, then I would say Rock Cup, barring the heat, then Adepticon and Origins, I believe, were were kind of right in right in the same same boat. Adepticon was a lot of fun. That was a cool ter- that was a cool cool convention. I agree. I I really liked it. I only went to two events, two major events this year. Um, I I genuinely did like Adepticon. I thought it was really fun. Cool. Um, yeah, but Gen Con Gen Con was also fun. I think the issue is just how expensive like i think that's the thing that drags it down how expensive it is to just go in and play hero clicks it's kind of nutty yeah but um, that's about it so he also asked um would we ever record a podcast on site at an event yes. Abs- absolutely um i just have to get to an event <laughs> that's the problem yeah, that's, me all three of us are there. that's the problem um, I think it'd be cool um, yeah. to do like a like a live show kind of thing. Um, That's what I was saying. Like instead of like take Q and A both through Facebook and with people there. Absolutely. Yeah, I know Critical Clicks used to do that way back when at Rock Up. They yeah, at Rock Up they would do a live show. Maybe we can talk to Howard about doing something at Rock Up. Yeah. That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> I'm down. Or we immediately get like banned or booed off the stage. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so we already kind of went through the tournament software, um, all that stuff. We can talk about that more in the next podcast. So, I mean, great questions, Anthony. We will we will finish them out in the next podcast. Um, but I think we've. We've kind of hit our limit here. I hate to do long podcasts for people that are listening, but um, great topics all around. Great conversation tonight, guys. It's been a blast. Absolutely. Um, Alec, thank you for coming on. I think I only called you Alex maybe like twice. Maybe. Yeah, I only did, I only did two shots during the... Oh, <laughs> TJ actually Sorry. did shots. <laughs> So, Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you guys uh, reaching out and asking. This was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, usually, we, Alec, you know, we, we love you. We're proud of you for doing what you did. And, um, you know, we're the podcast that has the second place ours on. So, um, but <laughs> Daniel actually, I said, hey, Alec is on the show tonight. He's like, Alec is going to be on the show before he's on my show. I'm like, uh, absolutely. Because sudden death is better. <laughs> Dan didn't think to reach out to Alec before I did. Well, <laughs> he mentioned look- something at Gen Con, but I figured that they, I don't know if I was like thinking that Isaac would probably get on, but I don't, I don't think he really does podcasts. Snooze, you lose. <laughs> yeah. Get, get with it, Dan. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Take care of your Patreon members. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so- no, this is awesome. I really appreciate you. Like, I really appreciate you guys reaching out. And this, like I said, this is a lot of fun. I love talking about Hero Clicks. And- hey, you're welcome on any time. Like I said, we just kind of talk some just Hero Clicks. I mean, as is very edu- educational, Alec, as. Um, and yes. I know TJ chimes in every once in a while, and I just kind of make sure the boat stays afloat. <laughs> So, awesome. um, anyway, final thoughts, TJ. Um, 
all figures should be unique. Oh, that's such a good <gasps> one. That's a good one. That's a good one. I love it. Yes, I agree. Sorry, <laughs> I'll, I'll add one caveat. All characters without various, without na real name various, should be unique. Okay. Do you, do you agree, TJ? That the generic. I can see that. I can see that. Alec, would you like to have a final thought? Um, I'm going to be very sad never playing Arachnid again. <laughs> That's right. It's okay, buddy. It'll, <laughs> the, the pain will go away. It'll, it'll slowly go away. I um, just really don't want to wrestle an alligator. He'll know. <laughs> <laughs> he'll, play, he'll play Arachnid. He'll know. He'll know. <laughs> <laughs> um... Final thought for me is uh, I had one and just kind of left my brain. Um, oh my gosh, it just completely just went blank. But I'll just I'll just leave with congrats, Alec. We're really proud of you. Really proud of you for I... doing what you did with Arachnite. You just got to put him on the shelf now, buddy. Yep, he's going in display case for sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right well thank you everybody for listening um and if you like again if you like what you're listening we'd love for you to become a patreon um always reach out to us if you have questions and we'll see you next time have a good night see you guys